Yo, what's good, YouTube? Man, it's your boy T. And how y'all doing today, bro? Now, today, I got a Lakers video for y'all. How many Lakers fans we got in here? Comment, hey, comment down below if you Laker Nation. I'm not, nigga, so don't, don't think you fucking with me or yourself. Don't think we gang, nigga. Fuck the Lakers, really. <laughs> really, though, but... You know, you can let me know if you Laker Nation. I, I don't really like y'all because y'all, like, you know what I mean? Y'all a delusional fan base. You know, we Thunder, we Thunder Nation over here. You hear me? You know, this is a little Laker video. It say the Lakers hit a new low. Now, I don't know what they talking about in here. We're going to see what they talking about. I know the Lakers looking for a new coach. All y'all got to do is text my phone. <laughs> That's it. I take, I'll take the contract. I'll do it, Brian. I'll get you another one. <laughs> you feel me? But no, nah, I'm just playing though. We gonna get into this video, man. We gonna roll to ten. Hey, ten K around. I know y'all see ten K. I see. I'm down the street from ten K. Y'all in the car? Who in the car with me? Y'all see ten K down the street? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Ten K coming soon. Okay. 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 Let's get into the video. I ain't got. I don't want to say too much though. Position more than the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't think so. But there's something you need to understand before we even get into this topic. This is something I mentioned when Frank Vogel was fired. A they few do years need a ago. coach. Los Angeles Lakers head coaching position isn't a coveted position at all whatsoever. You're playing in a large market with a fan base that's so passionate that they weren't even willing to accept LeBron James as their brand new <laughs> cornerstone. Remember when LeBron James first signed in Los Angeles and Los Angeles Laker fans were graffitiing over every mural that LeBron James had in Los Angeles. Laker fans didn't want to accept bro, this is not his own. city, though. That's how insane Los Angeles Laker fans can be. This fan base expects their team to be in the mix for the NBA Finals each and every year. Even though from the period of 2014 to 2018, this team was in the cellar. It doesn't matter if you're coaching the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, them, them Lions of Ball days, y'all was trash, bro. The expectations are for you to win. Even though the Western Conference has never been more stacked. With the emergence of the Dallas Mavericks who made it to the NBA Finals this year. The Phoenix Suns who are running some sort of crazy wild science experiment that is doomed to fail, but still, they are at the bottom of the Western Conference. You have the Denver Nuggets who are one of the deepest teams in the West in the NBA Championship right. last year. The Minnesota Timberwolves and the OKC Thunder took the next My step boys. last year. The Houston Rockets ended their season My boys, hold on. Hey, let's talk about it. Hey, let's talk about it though, like. Laker fans, y'all y'all talk to me in the comments. Let me know something, though. Like, y'all really think y'all finna be good next year? All, like, you know, just from what y'all see right now and what y'all got going on as a team, are y'all gonna be good? No. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the answer right now. Straightforward, nigga. No, nigga. Like, I'm tired, bro. And Brian fans, Brian fans, don't come in here talking, bro. Real, bro, be realistic, bro. LeBron is 40, bro. And he's not even a top five player no more. Like, he can't just carry y'all to the promised land, bro. It's not, it's not Cleveland, Miami, Brian, bro. I'm sorry. It's just not happening. Like, you you see, he just named teams. He just named, like, five teams that was better than y'all. The Suns. They barely, I don't know. Y'all might. The Suns, the Suns low-key boo-boo, too. But the, the Timberwolves, Nuggets, Thunder. Mavericks, all better than y'all. Let's talk about it. We can debate about it all day. I got time, bro. Were injured Let me know when y'all want to talk about it. Be better once John Morant returns. The Grizzlies. Victor Webinyama. And who knows? Maybe I don't know about the Spurs. Swing a trade and finally get Zion the help he needs. Pelicans weak. Being that the Western Conference is incredibly competitive. And that's Pelicans weak though. Hasn't changed on the situation. And ironically, the Spurs might be on some if they get Trey Young. Two years ago. Sure, this is the time that you want to take this Lakers job until they they start building their team like every other team in the NBA does in in. in in modern NBA, I don't think this is a good job. Why do we think that? And unfortunately, that old JJ Redick take still holds up today. The Los Angeles Lakers have never been. That was JJ Redick that said that? Last year, they brought back their depth pieces from a year ago. And we're hoping that one more year of familiarity. Ain't he trying to work? To Ain't he trying to coach? The playoffs. And despite LeBron James and Anthony Davis being the healthiest they've ever been, the Los Angeles Lakers were a play in team. And they still were but. the first round exit. They almost got swept in the first round. And don't get me wrong, they got very, very <laughs> close but the y'all nigga bro <laughs> y'all niggas got swept bro i'm not hearing that for one shit bro y'all barely won the fourth game bro y'all got swept bro gentlemen sweep they already swept y'all last year it was like you know 
We ain't gonna do Brown Brown like that. We gonna let him get one. We gonna let him get one off. <laughs> Y'all niggas is trash, bro. Y'all trash, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. There was one thing that was very evident. The right head coach would have made all the difference in a series versus the Denver Nuggets. And AD played like 60 something games this year. We have stretches. Y'all still butt. Just don't know what we're doing on both ends of the floor. And those are the ones that cost us. With that being said, I've mentioned it multiple times in my previous videos on the Lakers. Donovan Mitchell or Trey Young isn't going to be enough to compete in the Western Conference. The era of oh, y'all not getting one of them. And then having veteran minimum contracts as your depth pieces and hoping to make it to the NBA Finals is an outdated philosophy. And to be honest, even towards the tail end of the Miami Heat era, it was an outdated philosophy. Golden State Warriors were able to pull it off in 2017 when they signed Kevin Durant, but that's because the salary cap boomed and they had enough cap space to bring on Kevin Durant. It was an anomaly that you can't really expect. Man, fuck again. KD, and bro. Had a tremendous amount of depth on top of that. I ain't gonna lie, this video real hateful, bro. Could have saved the Los Angeles Lakers was a blue chip head coach. A head coach that could evolve NBA offenses and believe it or not, that's who they were targeting all along. Originally, we thought that the Los Angeles Lakers were targeting JJ Redick. Hell, Crispy Haynes said that the Los Angeles Lakers are trying to keep it a secret, but they're doing a horrible job at doing so. So. Are the Lakers waiting to announce their head coach until the finals are over? Because that coach might be working the final? Yeah, I, I would be very surprised if their next head coach is anybody but J.J. Reddick. Everything that I'm Bro, hearing I don't feel JJ like Redick that's a good... Is. I mean, people like, thought that J.J. He Reddick really, had hey, put his staff together. Don't get me wrong, J.J. no ball for sure. But a coach though, bro, like, it's different, bro. He already got a podcast with Brian and shit, bro. I ain't trying to have y'all niggas being friends, bro. I need the coach to be, you know what I mean, a coach. You feel me? Not Brian, not one of Brian guys. They gonna be talking about they offering D Wade a job next. Fuck, like, come on, bro, get some legends, bro. Brian, no, like, bro. Nobody want to coach for Brian though. That's the thing, cause you're gonna get fired if you don't win a championship in three years. That's why nobody want a coach for that nigga. What I know, he's doing some background, calling some candidates, um, some assistant coaching candidates who might be able to join his staff or might not be able to join My his lips staff. Lips a little ash, so, ain't uh, they? Yeah, it's. Well, Y'all niggas ain't tell I'm me. Pretty I'm pretty positive it'll be JJ. And hell, even Brian Windhorst, who knows all things up. to do with LeBron James, admitted that the Lakers aren't doing a good job of hiding their hand. Attempt. Maybe I'm giving away my feelings by saying attempt. There's a very strong message coming out that the Lakers are still early in their process, that there's still steps to be done, and that uh, they're being very thorough, and there's nothing to see here, and don't worry about that. Probably going to have to wait till after the finals. Probably. Um, and then there is information other out there otherwise. I seen Darvin Ham on the Bucks coaching staff. Uh, I will just be sit here and I will tell you that my second round exit on this is scattered. I have some people saying this is JJ Reddick's job that I trust. And I have some people saying that this is a process that is not complete. I suspect I know something, but I am just going to tell you that uh, it is it is it is uh, multiple. There's multiple streams of information. And then we got Shams confirming everything that the Lakers are truly targeting JJ Redick, and all of that was blown up when Adrian Wojnarowski told the world that Shams is wrong. The Lakers' top target is Dan Hurley of UConn. Ben. The Lakers target from the very beginning mm. of the, this search. They have talked to other candidates. They have done their due diligence. not like because they aren't sure they can get Dan Hurley, but he has been their target. He continues to be their target, and now he declined to six years, seventy mil. Dan Hurley. They have. That's made how sorry y'all is, bro. Preliminary contact with Hurley. They have he said 70 mil ain't even worth the stress more, of Laker fans. Do so it's not. And that the Los Angeles Lakers were going to meet with Dan Hurley on Friday. I'm told, Scott, he is traveling out to California. He's going to meet with Rob Palenka and Jeannie Buss, their owner, tomorrow. And this is going to move quickly. Uh, there's certainly traction on a deal with the Lakers. But Dan Hurley has not made a decision yet. Now, the interesting thing about this is the fact that J.J. Redick even had a podcast with Dan Hurley, which Dan Patrick roasted him for, saying that J.J. Redick lost the Lakers job with this podcast. I, I think the inspiration the last two years, especially this year, is like watching college football now or, or Shanahan from yeah. the NFL. It's actions that's just layered on top of each other, and we just try to disguise it with 
with the formations. But this podcast interview really got my attention. I think JJ was trying to get some tips. <laughs> need some form of offense that is similar to what the Denver Nuggets run that would take less pressure off of LeBron James and Anthony Davis that could get their role players involved whenever LeBron James or Anthony Davis decides to check out. And this is the one reason why I wanted Dan Hurley to coach the Lakers so badly. This is the play that we're discussing and an example of why Dan Hurley's offense would be so incredible. It's a play that's disguised as another play called the horn skip flip and what obviously the Hurley's offense is going to be more than just one play but it's just an example of what he could bring to the NBA would it translate that's a good play right there I like definitely. that really it's not just the one play that we want it's the fact <laughs> that he is capable of crafting these disguised plays it's very reminiscent hey, the Lakers seen that they say <laughs> They said, bro, get that nigga on the phone, bro. Brian don't be drawing those up in the timeouts. <laughs> they said, Darwin don't do that. <laughs> Man, get that thing on the phone. <laughs> Hanahan do in the NFL, where NFL <laughs> offenses would fake motion and would have defenses guessing whether or not the quarterback was about to fake a handoff to the wide receiver, hand it off to the wide receiver for a jet sweep, or hand it off to the running back. But defenses are also focused on the wide receiver potentially running a jet sweep. This type of confusion could be brought to the NBA, and it's what I believed could have saved the Los Angeles Lakers. So all eyes were on the Los Angeles Lakers on Friday. This wasn't about a college head coach coming in to try to develop players this was about a head coach that could one develop players and an offensive scheme that could have potentially revolutionized the nba at the very minimum you have a basketball mind that lebron james respects so the los angeles lakers would meet with dan hurley on friday and to be honest if you just looked at the situation there was no way the lakers could fumble this i mean bringing in a blue chip head coach to be your version of brad stevens for the los angeles lakers it worked wonderfully Ty Type, type. Celtics, he could be a Brad coach, Stevens. To coach LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And on top of that, Dan Hurley already won back-to-back -back championships at UConn. And the landscape of college basketball is about to change significantly. College basketball players are eligible for more than just NIL deals now. They can straight up get paid by the school. Amateurism is dead. And while I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, you have to admit that changes the landscape a little bit for these coaches. It's like changing the algorithm them for success in college basketball so dan hurley clearly has to be looking at the situation saying look i won back-to-back -back championships at uconn i might as well sell the players can get just my value and go to the nba this is the best scenario for me to do so lebron james even said that the los angeles lakers should hire a head coach that will still be their head coach even once lebron james retires they should focus a coach that is capable of working with lebron james which lebron did approve of dan hurley by the way but could even be the lakers head coach once the LeBron era is over, kind of like what Eric Spolstra was for the Miami Heat. So well, let me tell y'all something. Was perfect. The LeBron James era is over, bro. <laughs> I know it's. I know, bro. I know it's sad, bro. It's shit over though, cuz it's over. You know what I mean? It been over since like after he won that bubble joint. He won. They wasn't really on nothing after that. They ain't, they ain't still not on nothing. Y'all on a plan every year, bro. All he doing is waiting on his, waiting on his son. As soon as he play with both his sons, bro, he gonna be out of here, bro. Brown don't even care about winning like that, bro. If he can win on his terms, he'll do it. But like, if he gotta go out his way to win, Brown cool. Like, he like I got four good, I got four great ones. Dan Hurley hear me really has to feel pressure about the changing landscape in college basketball. It's the perfect opportunity to go to the NBA. There's no way the Lakers screw this up, right? Well, after their meeting on Friday, there wasn't a press conference announced for the Los Angeles Lakers and Dan Hurley. But on Monday morning, Brian Windhorst would say this. Well, the Lakers are on edge about this because they've thrown Dan Hurley the bouquet, so to speak, because they've given him presumably the largest coaching contract offer in the history of the franchise. They brought him out to give their vision, and he's been home for several days with no offer. Uh, meanwhile, other candidates that they're interested in are, you know, moving on elsewhere. So James Borrego, who they interviewed uh, about 10 days ago, he's getting momentum in Cleveland. He's expected to interview there early this week as a potential leading candidate developing with the Cavs. Uh, and, you know, their situation is that they have so prioritized Dan Hurley that they've let other candidates, potential candidates, and how do you become a coach? Elsewhere. It took them a while to get Dan Hurley go sign up. enough to seriously engage with them. They got that engagement. Nigga like now me take the Hornets to the finals, bro. 
And then on Monday morning, we found out lie. that according to Adrian Wojnowski, Connecticut's Dan Hurley has turned down the Los Angeles Lakers like, look at that. Year, $70 million offer and will return to chase a third straight national title. Like, I don't know what his contract is at UConn, but it's not that much. It, I mean, it's a lot, but I'm saying it's not as much as his Laker joint. For him to say no, bro, he know like y'all is finished, bro. Y'all finished, bro. Just blow the whole team up. Start over again. <laughs> what? Y'all need a new LeBron. What you talking about? LA would have made him one of the NBA's. I'm hating on the Lakers this video. Cookies. Yes, I am. Honestly, this really pissed I am, bro. I mean, we're going to get to like. in a sec, but the contingency <laughs> plan's even more depressing. I mean, it says after a dogged pursuit of Hurley over the past weeks, the Lakers will regroup and resume bringing in candidates for interviews with hope of hiring a coach by draft. James Borrego is expected to remain part of the group, and the Lakers could do their first formal interview with JJ Redick. The interesting thing is, Shams already said that the Lakers did interview. You, JJ Redick, but uh, that's besides the point. Now, I know six years and $70 million is a lot of money. I mean, obviously, if you're in Los Angeles, Uncle Sam takes a huge chunk of that. The state income tax in Los Angeles is significantly more than the state income tax in Connecticut. When you take a look at this offer, some Laker fans uh, are speculating that this that tax is a crazy a low ball offer. To give you an idea, the top three highest paid head coaches deserve to be the highest paid head coaches. I mean, number Who one. the top three? Kerr at $17.5 million a see? year annually. Then it's Greg Popovich at $16 million. A year. Let me pause this, man. So we got Steve Kerr, Pop, Spose, Monty Williams. How is that deserved? What he do to deserve this? He ain't got no chips and his record negative. Mike Brown, decent. But he really got that off of being on on the Warriors coaching staff. If we like be real, if he was if he was never on the Warriors coaching staff, they're not giving you that much. They might not even give you the job. But Monty Williams, that's terrible, bro. He got bro. He just lost 30, 30 games straight this season. Year annually. Then it's Eric <laughs> like this nigga again. He is robbing the Pistons. Head coaches with championships that have all the job security in the world. No one is ever going to fire one of these top three head coaches. No team is ever going to point the blame finger at them. But then you go to the next three, and these are coaches that have had success in the past and jumped ship to brand new teams. And number four, you have Monty Williams getting paid. He's not a good coach. A year annually, and then there's a. Huge there's no way you lose thirty games straight. Budenholzer with the Phoenix Suns at $10 million annually. Then you have Mike. They got Boone? Recently signed his contract extension. When they get him. Sacramento Kings. So pretty much the Lakers offered more than what Coach Bud would get. but less Yeah, the Suns are better than the Lakers. Williams I know they had that. Yeah, yeah, I know they had Boone. The fact that Monty Williams is the head coach of the worst team in the NBA. That is saying something. But also you have to bear in mind, Arizona has a flat income tax rate of 2.5%. When you compare that to Los Angeles, where the state income tax is 12.3%, and you compare that to Connecticut, where it could go from 3% to 6.99%. You're pretty much asking this man to take a huge risk and not that much more paid to take that risk. Yes, you get to live in Los Angeles where it's nice and sunny with plenty of homeless Sheesh. people. When you compare this contract to other head coaches, I think the Lakers should have offered exactly what Monty Williams got, maybe a little bit more than what Monty Williams got. Just bump up that number to $80 million and I bet you that the Los Angeles Lakers would have gotten Dan Hurley. And this is just yeah. my own personal theory. It's <laughs> such a catastrophic yeah. by the loss. Hey, LA. Hey, LA. Can we get LA on the phone, bro? I'm finna call them, bro. Y'all giving out. Man, let me touch. Man, I don't even cost that much. <laughs> I code. I don't cost that much. Like, I do I do one year for one meal. Fuck like you talk about. We can just see how it go. We can just see how we go. Y'all ain't got no coach anyway. What the fuck? Sign. It's cool, bro. It's good, bro. Y'all ain't got to sign me, bro. It's good. Keep losing then. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it, bro. Because I ain't, I'm done trying to change help niggas. Everything for the Lakers. It's pretty much the only move that made me optimistic as a Laker fan at all whatsoever. You can't name a single head coach that'll get me excited now. It's not going to be James Borrego. It's not going to be JJ Redick. The Lakers are going to continue to be a meme. And I hate to say it, but I don't really see it in any other way. It's really frustrating. Yeah, he's speaking facts. At least you're not going to. He's speaking facts for sure. 
That's gonna do it for this video though. Do y'all think the Lakers is finished? I do. Me personally, I do. Y'all y'all gotta get rid of A D, Brian, D Lo, all them. Get them out of here. Clean that up. And y'all could you know what I mean? Maybe y'all could get something going over there. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts in the comments, man. Road to 10K, man. With that being said, my dogs, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs>